<laughs> All right. Hi, Elizabeth Hefner, Sapphire Ambassador. You guys, thanks so much for jumping on to our Rock Your Purpose special call. Um, we are in the middle of all kinds of transitions at my house. It's been constant transition since the end of August, literally. And here we are. So this is proof that anyone can be a jewel, that we can do hard things, and that we can just learn to be more disciplined than where maybe we are right now. Um, but I think I already talked about discipline a couple of calls ago, so I'm not going to talk about that so much. But what I do want to talk to you about, which is great to piggyback off of team call with Sue just a few minutes ago, was just that through this servant leadership, through being a servant to our people and thinking what is truly best for them, then we are rewarded in so many ways. Um, and I I've been reflecting on this, that we have a lot of people that we want to help, right? We have people that come onto our team and start our products because they're really sick or they have a lot of health issues or energy issues or, 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 and a lot of times when people come in with kind of a lot of that background of just being chronically ill, then they uh, don't always stick with it super long, right? But if we truly want what is best for someone, then it's our job to help them see the beauty in healing their body. And it's helping them order more than one or two months. And for some people, it's more than three or four months. So when we think of this being a servant and knowing what is best for them, it's a lot of education. It might be a lot of what feels like handholding to some, um, depending on your personality, and it might feel kind of bold to say, don't quit your products. Don't stop what you're doing because this stuff will work, right? Some people might not feel super comfortable saying, oh my gosh, don't quit. But I go back to um, Tiffany Wilson. She was on 10 medications, you guys, and she wanted to quit. She was super sick with her detox. And Fallon was like, those medications are going to kill you showed her information as to why that was true and really pushed her to stay on. And now she's even going further and further steps in her health and healing, right? Um, so anyway, that is just a little aside, but when we think, I just want to help people, but helping people sign up and then not communicate to us, that's not helping them. So we have to figure out how we can best reach them. Give them a call, leave them a voice message, text to them, email them if you have to, <laughs> message them in Messenger. What is the best way to stay in contact with you? How can I help you? And sending them information, even if it looks like they're ignoring you, but also gently. And in some people, you might have to be more bold, but calling them out in that, hey, you started this because you have migraines. And it's going to take something that you've had for 20 years. It's going to take longer than a month to see a change. Um, it's okay to tell them that. All right. So I also wanted to talk about risk and entrepreneurship and leadership. Like where are we going right in this business? So the former CEO of Starbucks, Howard Schultz, he said, risk more than others think is safe and dream more than others think is practical. And how many people have you heard are like, what do you mean you're going to do plexus? Like, what does that mean? You know, <laughs> I have been telling people, which I also learned is not necessarily super compliant, but I've told people I'm retired and they're like, what do you mean you're retired? Aren't you like 35? And I'm like, yes, yes, I'm 35, but I'm not 35, I'm older, but I let them believe, okay, yeah, yeah, but I'm, I'm super young to be retired. I work from home now. I have a health and wellness business that I do. It gives me time to be home with my children. And I've helped people overcome a lot of health issues and financial struggles. And that's my little elevator speech. And it just gets their attention and it opens the door to talk more and then weave that in through um, further conversation. But what are we dreaming about? What are we really risking? And are we really risking something doing Plexus? I mean, we pay a membership fee that's $39, but it pays for itself like tenfold. We're getting our perks points and getting money back on our purchases. Our membership fee is a tax write-off. We're getting paid to take our vitamins. 
what risk are we really taking with plexus? We're really not. There is no risk. There is no, oh my goodness, right? We're taking great supplements. They are worth their weight in gold. Um, are we risking some time? Well, maybe, but aren't we risking time when we go to grad school for a physical therapy degree? <laughs> that was a lot of time. That was a lot of financial input too. Um, where, what about our talents? Are we risking our talents or are we wasting our talents? I want you to think about this stuff. You guys, I want you to write down, talk to me in the chat, whatever it is that you feel to come out of you, like get it out there. Um, this is a small group, so we can all be friends here. Um, are we wasting our talents? And I can guarantee that your God-given talents fit into this business, all right? Um, when you look at just your jewels and rock your purpose, but if you look further into your jewels of pink power, we all have different giftings and talents. And we all have, there's a lot of jewels. And because we all end up meshing together, we all end up offering something different and it brings a lot of balance to our teams. And that comes down to you guys. And then it comes across. So my team, like my down, I have a lot of balance in there, right? Um, how many of you go to your full-time job and you know that there's something more for you? Like, you know that you're not necessarily accomplishing that huge drive that's inside of you by going to this job every day, right? But yet you find kind of feel stuck, like, how can I move up in this environment? Um, it's really, really interesting we, I have taken the DISC assessment, assessment twice now in the last few months, and I actually found a free one that I took again. I took the free one because I'm like, let's see how accurate this free one is, and I'll put it in the, in the link because it was pretty, it was, it was accurate. It was consistent with my other two, and it gives you just this kind of rain, kind of idea of your personality but more so in how you communicate to others. And that's what, you know, the color personality is all about. That's what the Enneagram study is all about. It's about how we can learn where we are and how we can reach other people better, right? And more effectively. But it's funny that in corporate healthcare, there is no, there's just like, oh, you're too passionate. Like, I understand you're passionate, but you're too passionate. Like, you can't say that here. Like, what do you mean? Like, <laughs> if I'm passionate about something, why aren't you helping me channel my passion to be an asset to your company, right? Kind of a weird way of thinking. Where in Plexus, now with this jewel training that Jackie and I went to last week, one of the things we did prior to going was taking this DISC assessment. If we all took a DISC assessment in the corporate world and could cue people in kind of where we fall in that personality, it would improve communication by like 75%, I am convinced, right? Um, so anyway, that's kind of an aside, but I just have always kind of felt a little like I made for more, but I knew I wanted to be a PT and I love helping people, but yeah, I couldn't like grow out of that. I was just kind of there and you can't out PT yourself. I could be the best PT in the hospital or the best PT in the peds clinic, and I'm, I'm not going to make any more money. I'm not going to get a bonus. I'm not going to be given a car to drive. I'm not going to be sent to Hawaii. I mean, you guys, we can hardly get them to pay even a little bit of our continuing education that our license requires us to have, right? It's really interesting. Um, another question for you, are you living in fear? Are you living in fear of the unknown, fear of failure? I'm surprised, believe it or not, I have fear of failure because I have high expectations for myself because I want to help others because I want other people to see this dream too, right? And I don't want to fail. I don't want to fail my kids. I'm homeschooling them. You guys, that's a lot of responsibility. <laughs> I don't want to fail them. I don't want to fail my husband. You know, I want to, to do these things and do them well. But I think if I didn't have a fear of failure, where when then I'd be complacent and we don't want that. So are you living in joy and gratitude, right? We want to be content with where we're at, where we're at. We're called to be content. Absolutely. But that doesn't mean that we settle. 
It doesn't mean that there's anything wrong with working hard and getting rewarded for it. There is nothing wrong. Let me say this again, for working hard and being rewarded for your hard work. So Plexus, you guys know how it works. I go out there, I recruit some people. They're like, oh, you recruited two. Here's an extra bonus. On top of the bonus, they're already paying me. Oh, you recruited two more. Here's another bonus. I'm working hard and getting bonuses for working hard, right? I can tell you what, I could stay three hours late at my PT job and I'm not going to get a bonus. Definitely not. Ask my husband. Not going to get a bonus. <laughs> I'm not going to be rewarded. I'm going to say, oh, good job. Maybe, maybe they'll notice that I went out of my way. Um, I've worked a lot of years <laughs> for as a PT and it's great. And you know what? In the hospital, I wasn't like, oh, I'm going to go see these extra patients because I want a bonus. No, I went because it was the right thing to do and it was helping them and it was meeting the goal of what I felt was appropriate and good care for them. So I'm not a monster, I promise, but I'm just saying that there's nothing wrong with being rewarded for working hard. Um, what about um, if we didn't share and touch someone's life. What if I never was open to, P to Plexus and then I never shared with Melissa and I know I can say this about Melissa. So I use her story a lot, but she was passing out at work. You guys, she was going home and napping every day. She's more than 10 years younger than me and could barely function. And she started Plexus and she quit passing out. I mean, she'd probably be on a bunch of medications now. Who knows if she would have been able to have her children who knows if she'd even still be able to work because she was going down this path of just not functioning. Um, what, what if I hadn't shared and what if we didn't continue to share? We don't know who we're going to miss if we aren't sharing. I said this on that call a couple of weeks ago with Pink Power, how Beverly had shared like this moral obligation to share something that we know is going to help people. And I, I definitely strongly believe that. And then what about people that you know, well, I don't need any more money. I don't really care about money. Okay. Well, you don't care about money, but I can guarantee that there's people in your circle that do need money that do need to pay some extra bills that are staying up at 3 a.m. wondering how they're going to pay that electric bill or whatever. And I know that right now with even the gas prices, consumers, you know, it's getting harder to pay. Um, Michigan. So the other thing just to think about is that, you know, we all are going through something or we will, or we have, um, in our business. It's not going to go away. There's death, there's marriage, there's babies, there's sickness, there's people losing jobs. I mean, there's all kinds of things. And the only way to get through them is to walk through them. Um, my dad passed away. Now my father-in-law recently passed away. And the only way to grieve and get through that is to grieve and get through it. And sometimes that's really, really hard. And we have to set aside time, I think, to grieve. But we also have to think about how we want to get through this, how we're going to walk through this. So I had a friend who was sick, some scary sick, um, not great stuff. And another friend at work said, okay, well, if this is the thing that takes you down and you die, how are you going to end, live out the rest of your life? Are you going to be, oh my gosh, I could die every single day and be stressed and anxious and worried and hyperventilating? Are you going to live joyfully and abundantly for the time that you have, right? And this friend recovered. She's doing great, but she was so, oh my gosh, I could die that she just couldn't get out of herself. And it was another friend who had a same diagnosis. It was like, listen, you get to choose. You get to choose if you're going to live your life abundantly and fully and enjoy the time you have with your children or if you're just going to be an anxious ball the whole time. Um, and God promises to take care of us. You guys, like we should be smart with our finances. We should be smart with our time, but he promises to take care of us too. So we do our part and we live joyfully and we live with gratitude and those things are going to pay off. Um, you know, Plexus corporate, they want us to offer this financial solution to people. They know their products are good. 
they, they stand firmly on their products. That is why we have multiple scientists and doctors on staff at corporate. However, they also know that their comp plan is the best and it's solid and we're a solid company. We've been around for a while and we're debt free. So they know, okay, we know that what we have to offer people is the real deal. And Plexus wants us to be talking about that too. Um, Jesus says in John 10, 10, the thief comes only to steal and kill and destroy, but I have come that you may have life and live it to the full and living life to the full is different for each one of us. I remember uh, my third child, he didn't want to sleep. I had these two other little kids and I'm like, I gotta get you to sleep. I know you need to sleep. And this, we had this whole sermon about this and I'm like, Sammy at three months old for him to live life fully. It's for him to be rested and sleeping. Like sleep is super important to babies. Right. And I would pray over him and pray over him and pray over his sleep and really learn his sleep cues because that was so important to get him to rest and be peaceful like that. Right. And it worked. It worked. <laughs> like we, I just prayed like God knows what he needs. Right. Um, so are we going to take the overwhelm and just stay stuck in our overwhelm? Or are we going to overcome? Uh, John 16, 33 says, these things I've spoken to you so that in me, you may have peace and the world, you may have tribulation, but take courage. I have overcome the world. And I think I got to like post this all over my social media, because I think this verse is super important to hang on to right now with so much stuff going on in the world. All right, so now on to a little bit more action steps. That's kind of my background. This is where my brain has gone, right? Um, And I want to remind you about time blocking. We've talked about this a few times. Um, Time blocking is really great. And uh, if you haven't done it, the first thing I recommend is just jotting down where your time is being spent. We wake up, eat breakfast, the kids do this, whatever. Work, block. So you're writing down where you're spending your time in order to see where you may not be using your time as well, okay? And then coming from that exercise of paying attention and taking that time survey, then you're gonna block your time and put time in for things that are your priorities. And I've talked about this multiple times, like your top three for the day. Don't try to accomplish 20 things in a day, it's three. Maybe if it's a Saturday or kids are gone or something, you can do five, but don't, don't do that because we have things, we all have things we have to do, like take a shower and eat and we should be exercising. Right. So we're not going to overwhelm our stuff with ourselves with more and more and more. Um, and then out of that, we are looking for things that we can postpone for a time. We're looking for things that we can, you know, not do for a while. If you're used to working out for three hours a day and you decide, yeah, I really need to put a little more effort into my business then you are going to maybe say, okay, I'll work out for an hour and a half a day. You know, I'm not saying not to work out. I think that's important, but thinking of where you can spend your time. Maybe you do workout videos videos at home for a while instead of driving 30 minutes to the gym. You know, these are just ideas. I don't know what your life looks like. Talk to your sponsor to problem solve and like have conversation if you need a thinking partner. Sometimes it helps just to talk things out with someone. And I want you to look for things that you can delegate. And I mean, delegate. So delegate in my mind, I did not look up a definition, but delegate in my mind means I give this task to you and I do not think about it anymore. I'm not thinking, okay, is Jason really going to have dinner ready? Do I have to call him and ask him like, what are you going to have? What are you going to make for dinner? Do I need to help you at all? Like, no, I have delegated dinner to my husband. So therefore I don't think about dinner. I don't have to I just know I need at six o'clock, I'm going to be eating. I don't even care what it is. <laughs> I just know that it's happening and that I haven't had to put any thought process into it. Cause when we're delegating, then we're not thinking, are they doing it right? Are they not doing it right? Okay. Now in the middle of that, especially if you're training your kids to do something, I have one that just walked in, then it does take some effort and time to train, but this is also like training our team. We go and walk 
through these tasks with them, we go back to chapter one and say, this is how you wash the dishes. This is how you do this part. This is how you do this part. And it takes that extra time in the beginning. But then once he learns and he becomes the expert in doing the dinner dishes, then that is his and I'm not thinking about it anymore. I know it's done well. Okay. Um, now, when we're thinking of delaying something, so I know we have got, we've done the whole like multiple kids and multiple activities. We've done the, okay, no one's in anything. We've done it all. We've done in between this year. I'm trying to keep things a little more chill, nothing too crazy. I was even really picky about where my youngest went to dance. So I wasn't driving really far away. Right. Um, just really picky in those things. And cause we I've done it all. So I'm, there may be seasons where you talk to your family and get them on board with delaying some things so that you can do them later and not have this time stress. Okay. Um, okay. Last my, I wrote my note. I typed my notes. I never do this. I always write them. Um, little kids are fairly easy in filling their little bucket of what it is that they feel loved in. And it's not always in running them to 12 different activities. It really is more one-on-one -on -one or one-on-two -on -two activities, playing stupid little games, making stuff up, get a balloon out. I mean, my goodness, you know how much fun you can have with a balloon and some kids? Um, put the different pillows that are, you know, not your nice ones on the floor and play the floor is lava. Like simple stuff keeps them super occupied. They feel very loved. They feel very engaged, very much into that. And maybe not scheduling multiple, multiple play dates and activities and zoos and museums and all these stuff, like the stuff is good. But I'm thinking like, even before Plexus, I kept those things to like once or twice a month, not multiple times in a week. So just some things to think about and what seems best for you and not getting overtired kids. <laughs> um, bedtime, I don't know how you do with bedtime. But I feel like bedtime is super duper important so that they know what their expectation is of themselves. And you can expect them to go to bed at a certain time so that you can plan the rest of your evening. Okay. Um, there's lots and lots of ways. There's lots of sleep coaches. There's lots of books. There's lots of resource. There's YouTube. There's pages on Instagram that are sleep people, you know, that can help you with tools in order to help your kids to sleep better or in a more predictable schedule, whatever it is. And then mama four here, keep them in their crib as long as you can, as long as they are safe. So put the sleep sack on them backwards, zip it up. Well, it zips down, put it on them backwards, the sleep sack, they can't get their leg up over the rail and climb out um, <laughs> and put it on backwards. They can't undo it and take it off. That's what we did. Um, but keeping them in a crib as long as you can is kind of funny but it's kind of true too because it means that they can't get up and get you or really get really good at teaching them to wait for you to get them in the, in the morning um my big kids now to fill their cups it's a little different sometimes I just have to take them with me when I'm running errands just so that we have time to talk and they can pick the music and whatever and kind of get in their heads a little bit more um, when I was little trying to send a bunch of messages and flex this all day while my little kids were running around. I might be listening to a training video. I might be making a phone call or something, but I was with them and listening to a training video because I can pause that, pay attention to them, like folding laundry, folding laundry. What are you doing when you're folding laundry? You're zoning out anyway. Fold the laundry, listen to a training call, pause it. Okay, I need to help you. I need to take you to the bathroom, whatever it is. And then once they were in bed, that's when I set, would sit there and do my IPA. Um, let's see, diamond docks are eight minutes. Those I would listen to. I was doing my makeup or driving in the car, something like that. And then, yeah, so delegation. That all stems from delegation in my brain, sorry. <laughs> And then getting buy-in from your husband um, and older kids, your kids, getting them to dream, right? And sometimes it's harder for our husband to see Hawaii. It's harder for them to see this big thing that to them might feel really far in the future because they see you messaging and they see you working and they see all this stuff and they're like, well, great, that's awesome, but you didn't make that much money, right? However, what they don't see is that 
coming down, this is all like, it's all building, it's all snowballing. So the time that we put in as network marketers in the beginning doesn't pay out as much. But now for me on this flip side, it is way, way, way paid off, right? Um, it's way paid off. Like I couldn't work enough hours as a PT right now to bring in this kind of money and I wouldn't want to try. Um, so making sure you're setting those small visions and goals with your husband, like, hey, let's go to Disney in March. But that means I need to do the work right now. That means that I need to, to get in touch with some people. So getting that small vision and goal with him, because this is the other thing, take your husband to leaders retreat and I hope there's no guys on here. Sorry, I can't see everybody. Um, so take your wife, if that's the case, to leaders retreat. And you are going to allow them to see the heart of Plexus and see our corporate leadership and see our leaders in action. And they're going to see how Plexus spoils us. And that's going to speak very highly to them. Um, so don't forget about that side of it too. It's not just, oh my gosh, we're going to Disney. It's, oh my gosh, my husband gets to see Plexus. And so do I, if this is your first trip, right? Um, and then really help him see like, I need one out, like one hour, a couple of days a week of uninterrupted time. Like, can you put them to bed? Can you do the dinner dishes? Whatever it is. And then making sure that he knows that he's the priority on Saturday night or Friday night, whatever night your date night is so that he's getting that undivided attention then too. Um, so sometimes that works too, just talking, talking more, setting those small goals as a family and with him. And then for some people, you know, seeing like, okay, $300 extra dollars a month, that's not really a big deal. If that was what I saw, $300 a month, I'd say, well, I'm going to go work a PT job down the street, work a few hours and make more than that and not have like, that's all I'd have to do. Right. But some, so some people need a trickle of a vision and some people need the bigger picture sooner. And that's where we have book club. And that's why we are talking about how we communicate and we can read people to help communicate best to them. Because I would not have been excited about Yes, I was excited about $300 a month, but it's because I also knew that there was more, more to come because I saw the big picture and I saw the success that was coming out of Plexus. Um, all right, I have to talk fast. So <laughs> the other thing to keep in mind is that you're not just self-employed renting a building, you're an entrepreneur, okay? So when you are not an entrepreneur, when you own that building and you own that roof and then you own that foundation, if there's something goes wrong, that's on you to fix. You're making the phone calls. You're not just calling the landlord and saying, hey, my roof is leaking. You have skin in the game and you are truly taking care of those things. Um, not just saying, hey, somebody come and bail me out over here, right? So when we are thinking of this, what we want to do is be able to take our new business builder back to our chapter one and help walk them through. This is where our guides come in. So our guides they used to be called units and rock your purpose right at the top when was the last time that you went and like read through them so you know what's there because that's our our duplication tool right there to help people stay on their products and to catch the vision it's all built in to I have a new ambassador now what of course now it's a new VIP but I have a new person now what what do I say to them? How do I onboard them? What do I add them to? We have this all laid out, you guys. These are your tools to go back to and help people walk through them. And you're going back and walking through it with them, not just expecting them to go and figure it out on their own. Okay. Um, so okay. I have a couple things that I want you to do every day. So write this down. You're going to keep track of your perks. You're going to look at your perks report. You're going to look at your... Um, points and you're going to look at your success sprints and then my planner like has each month and it has how many days are in the month you know one two whatever and what I can do then is I can look back and go okay on this day this la last month I was at this many points or I was at this in the success sprints now this is important because how many people are surprised at their points 
on the last day of the month or the 28th of the month. Oh crap, that's not where I thought I was gonna be, right? So we need to know where we've been and where we're going in order to continue to know where we're going. So you need to keep track every day. You don't have to do it in your planner. Mine happens to have these columns. Get a dollar store calendar, print a calendar off the computer, offline, whatever it is that you need to do. So you know where your points are every single day and you can gauge where you're going. My other challenge to you is that I want you to increase your points, your total points this month by 36. So don't let that scare you. That's kind of a low number for some of you. I had to pick a number that was fitting for uh, the whole team right now. So my challenge is at least 36. So that's either what three new people and then maybe three people that haven't ordered in a while or a combination of of that right or maybe you help someone go silver and so you're helping level twos and then maybe you're helping them get duplicated that down right so think about ways that you can problem solve that and something else that will help is if you draw out your team and i did this a long time ago and then i got used to just printing my back office but I love the visual that you can get when you draw. So here's me in the middle and I have my workers. Now, obviously I have would need a lot of paper, but <laughs> I wanted to show it simply. And then if you have someone who's getting a join here and a join there, like, okay, well, you're only one away from silver or, hey, you're three joins away from senior silver or, well, this person down here has a join. How can we help them go silver? So I want you to be able to see where, where you're, um, where you're at. So if someone, if you're someone that has you and then a bunch of people and you're a great recruiter, but well, how can we help duplicate that? How can you help your people also be a recruiter? Okay, so that's my challenge to you is to write out your back office in a bubble format. And I really think that you doing it is gonna take a lot of ownership of where you're at and where your business is. And if you're like, okay, I have it written out, but now I don't know what to do, then yes, your sponsor, we are definitely here to help you and to problem solve that but you need to take the time to go through your back office and do that. Um, okay, and then my last point in all of this is that we have a lot of, well, it must be nice, Elizabeth doesn't go to work anymore and she's home with their kids or whatever, you know? Um, but I gave up stuff. I gave up TV. I still don't really watch TV. I gave up running my kids to 20 different activities. So that I would have the time to be able to take my kid to a private basketball lesson at four o'clock in the afternoon on a Wednesday, right? So I put in the time and the effort what, a few years ago, and now my time and effort is just very different, but it's still very, very much there, okay? And are you willing to sow what you're asking to reap? Like, are you actually willing to go out in the fields and tow the soil, till the soil and plant the seeds and make sure they're getting the right amount of water and day in and day out. And that's not always super fun going out to check the field every day, and checking the water soil levels and stuff that isn't necessarily fun. It's kind of tedious, right? But at the end, when the harvest comes, it's so beautiful and it's so worth it. So hang in there. Um, entrepreneurship is living a few years of your life like most people won't so that you can spend the rest of your life like most people can't. So I'll say that one more time. Entrepreneurship is living a few years of your life like most people won't so that you can spend the rest of your life like most people can't. So you have this inside of you. I promise that you do. And you have all the tools and resources and support that you'll ever need. And so, you know, and the other thing too, is that it took a little while for my husband to kind of get on board, but I just kept telling him like, no, this is important and I can do this and we're going to go to Hawaii <laughs> and I'm going to be on that stage and kind of like pushing him to see that this was important to me. Um, I do think as women, we tend to give up on our own dreams 
kind of a little quicker because we want to serve our husband and serve our family and serve our job. And that's all very beautiful. And I'm telling you that you can do those things and do them well, and you can still grow a plexus business, but you, more than that, you can become an entrepreneur. So you guys have a good night. Thank you for allowing me to talk a little late and long, and I appreciate you so much. So you guys have a good night.